fellow businessman Mike Check, from the Institute of Toronto. Thank you all for attending. I would like to see a lot of great faces already here. So inshallah, our brother Rahat Khadr is coming in right now, and uh, hopefully inshallah will be good to go a little bit. How are you all good? Thank you. 
state of Islam. Uh, so, Islamic institutes want to relate this authentic knowledge, the legacy of Prophet, which has been transmitted by generations of scholars, giants of the Islamic civilization, the great imams, intellectuals like Ibn al Ghazali, Ibn al Khaldun, Ibn al Taymiyyah, Ibn al Qayyim, and many hundreds of others who devoted their entire life to pass on to us the authentic Islam, but they adapted it to their own conditions. There is a principle, a, a modern rule in fiqh. Ta'ayyur al-futiyah bi ta'ayyur al-zaman wa maka. Fatwa changes in accordance to changing times and conditions. What do we mean by that? There are constant principles, universes in Islam, but then there are application of these principles which may change. And that's why we have University of schools of jurisprudence, even in a single school like Hanfi School, we have different rulings even in different times. In the Shafi school, there is Ujo, different options, different rulings from the same. The same in the case with the Hanbali school, which is considered to be very, very textual or textual in depth, and yet even Imam Muhammad. Any issue you take and you ask what is the view of Imam Ahmad, there will be sometimes 10 views that you go to. And the same is the case with the Maliki school. And you heard Abdullah Abdul Hakim Jackson talk about this giant, the mountain Karafa. So we are, we have great courses here to break lines from the first generation down to the modern times. And I taught this course five part. So, of course, I'm not boasting we can do full justice to all of these great personalities, but we need to introduce them to everyone so that we are inspired by these great lives of role model is Rasulullah Allah and then the four caliphs and the great imams, the great awliyaullah. There is no shortage of such individual in the Islamic history. So, I would ask you to be part of this institution. We teach Hanafi Fikriya, we teach Maliki Fikriya, we teach Shafi Fikriya, we teach Hanbali Fikriya, because we want to break this sectarian narrow mindedness. We need to look at the Fikr as a rich tradition, and it is that every Muslim should be proud. Or even if you are a Hanafi, you should be proud of the contribution of Imam Shah. Let me explain to you a reasonable, a sad state of this Ummah. I used to be Imam in Jami Mosque, we had seminars with the great Imams, and I was talking about Imam Abu Hanifa, and one of the, some of the students from the stage who attended the lecture went back and told the Isna president, Dr. Zaki Hamman, that Sheikh Ahmad Kuti is a fanatical Hanafi. So when he met me, he said to me, this is one, what one person reported to me about you. I said, Sheikh Ahmad, I'm coming from a Shafi background. I come from South India. I was raised as a Shafi. I, I was trained as a Arab in a Shafi school. But of course, I went forward to do my advanced studies in comparative jurisprudence. But when I talk about Abu Hanifa, I talk about him with utmost respect. Because all of the jurists are dependent on Abu Hanifa. Because if you want to learn fit, master the work of Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi. So this is our approach to the great demands. We appreciate the mark, and of course we appreciate the real tasawwuf. Authentic tasawwuf, it is part in the heart of Islam. And we want to transform the character, transform the mind, so that you are, you can take over the future of Islam, inshallah. We are respond to Islam in the work of Allah and it's a 
in order for me and you to serve this cause, inshallah, and Islam, we are all going to die. Islam will go, is ascendant. It's not going to go down, even though Muslim tradition may be despondent and deep and sad, but we must want our Allah help us to join this kind of educational. We want this to be a lesson of time. So then this stuff we are taking, inshallah, we will do that. So I want you to go to our website and look at our curriculum. And of course, you can also go to Islam.ca and all Islam.net. Alhamdulillah, I have a right person's day. I give uh, advices on Sharia issues, on fitness issues, marriage and things like that. You must want to go to us to leave behind us footprints in the sense of life. تلك أخارنا تذل علينا فانظروا بعدنا من الأخارين You know, great child said These are the footprints that we have got to be hiding in the science of life After we are born, if you want to know what kind of people we are in the world Look at that footprints in the science that we have got So we want this institution to be a legacy speaking for me as Imam Bukhari said, when I stand before the Lord of the Worlds, I will say to my Lord that here it is, my leg of love. I love you, so I have dedicated this work to you. So we want to dedicate this work, this great institution, for the love of Allah Bukhara. I exhort you and persuade you to join us in this great enterprise. Dr. Tariq Al-Mura is here, by the way. His father, I was a mujib of his father, and it is an honor for me to meet the great son. And actually, as a high school student, I grew up waiting anxiously the arrival of al Muslimun, the great general that his father was a leader of. Let us welcome Dr. Khai Kamala, and indeed one of the great intellectuals in the contemporary in the world, inshallah. And we have the same vision, we are strong, we will help us to honor him and learn from him and to be inspired by him, inshallah. Yeah, sometimes. 
comes to very difficult time, leaving the country, leaving the rules, and coming to another country. This is an experience of the past, and it's not the, the, the vision of the future. And what is important here is to understand that uh, when you see that in the age of Mark Muhammad and Mark of the Bias and Islam, you can see it in this country, this is the starting point of your responsibility. No one.
It's not necessarily giving freedom is check your mind and do what is right and not what all the people are doing. And this is where, as students, and we know this, there is you know, schools and there is the culture, the surrounding culture, and we are pushed to do what the people are doing and they all I'm free because I'm doing all what they are doing. So they drink and drink, they smoke, I smoke. They go they to clubs and I do the same. This is not freedom, this is just to follow the majority, to follow the people. And they are telling you do what you want, but in fact what Islam is telling you, do you really do what you want? Or do you want do you do what they want you to do? And you follow them. So the first attitude is really as Muslims is to come in this society and to say, I'm trying to be the way I want to be and to respect myself. And this is our first message to Canada. And as young uh, students and young Canadian Muslims, this is the way you have to deal with this society is we are here to show the dignified way of dealing with ourselves. There are things that we are not going to do. And it starts with a very simple thing. The first, you know, many of you are coming from countries where within the country, some of you converted to Islam here, some of you are coming from Pakistan, coming from India, coming from the Arab world or the Middle East. And there is something in your culture which is very, very close to the Islamic principle. You see, in fact, whatever we are, we give. We give. Generosity is the very essence of Islam. You love him, you give to people. Because God, the Prophet has said, is the best among you, is the best for human beings. It's not for Muslims, but human beings. So you understand that we have to have an open heart. Even if we don't like what the people are doing, we see the same who they are and we give. We give to people. So check in your society, in schools, wherever you are. Do the people around you feel that there is an added value to your presence? That you are giving something to this society? Or are you just here to say, we want you to accept us? And we end up nurturing an inferiority complex in the way we deal with this society. So we need to come with not only we are at home, but we ensure that we are at home by the way we give to people. And there is this dimension of the heart which is important. Let us, as Muslims, show the way we have an open heart when it comes to solidarity, when it comes to justice, when it comes to respecting the uh, elder people in this society. You live in a society in Canada where the way we deal with, with the elder people is not out of respect, it's as if when you don't make money for the society, you are on the margin of the society. And all people are, are forgotten within the society. That's not the Islamic way. The Islamic way is respect the elder people, respect the people the way they have to, 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 to be respected in our society, in our way to deal with Allah, in our way we deal with the people who dedicate us when uh, we needed them. So this is the way you have to have a constructive presence in anything which has to do with your heart. And there are simple things that are very important in the way you deal with yourself. Try to have a, 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 a respect towards the people. You know that the Prophet was saying that the whole of the in the day. Don't talk about someone who is absent except in good terms. It's very important for us to be this presence where we are trying to show to the people that we have values, that there are things that will be new by banking, by insulting the people, vulgarity, slang language, we avoid this. This is not our way. Our way is to dignify with the way we talk, in the way we serve, in the way we interact. And if someone is rejecting you, don't respond with your emotion, respond with your wisdom.
And this is what we have to be involved in the, within the society. We should not isolate ourselves. But in order not to isolate ourselves, we should be strong with our understanding of Islam. Because if you don't understand and you don't study Islam, you go and you are lost to do what they are doing if you are not equipped. If you don't understand your religion, you are going to be lost because they are very powerful. This is a culture, it's a very powerful culture where everything is done to attract your instincts, your desires, where your emotions, and you go. You know, for example, many of you, you like movies, and we know how it works now. It's, you know, even in Hollywood, the movies, the way they are dealing with movies, is based and, and produced by psychologists. They are working on the substance of some movies to attract your emotions. So you have scripts that are discussed through psychologists saying we need to read this to attract the people. So you think that you, you, you are watching the movie only with your mind while they play with your emotion. And that's something which is, this is our weakness. So we need to be equipped and be powerful and, and stronger in that dimension. By doing what? Knowing our religion, but also in social terms to show how much we want to be involved in this society by solidarity work. And solidarity work means that uh, we should try to be involved in activities in this society. And whenever we have schools, it's important. An Islamic school is not a school for Muslims. An Islamic school is a school with Islamic principles for all, which is not the same. The study principles for all is, as a Muslim, I have my principle, but I'm going to serve humanity. I'm going to serve the people even if they don't share my belief, if they don't share my practice. I'm going to serve them, to serve them, to show them that I'm here to serve humanity because this is what Allah and the Prophet are teaching me. Serve the people. And serve the people starts with a good example. So, if you have, for example, in this society that people are trying to forget the, 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 you know, the, the meaning of life, some by indulging into uh, drinking, drugs, uh, violence, we start by saying this is not our way. We can't pay that uh, our brother have, for example, against domestic violence. That's very important. Muslims who are accepting violence against women are not understanding the message. We should get the full front of this fight. We don't, we don't accept this. There is no domestic violence in Islam. We cannot be our uh, uh, wives and, and, and beating the woman is not Islam. So we start with ourselves and we come into the society by saying drugs and, and all the, the, the reasons that are sometimes justified with alcohol, with violence, with uh, justifying bad behavior. This is something that we are not accepting. So we come at the forefront by contributing to the change of the society. In fact, the true Muslim, the Indian presence, is a Muslim presence helping Canada to be better. Are you doing the job? Is this what you are and who you are in this society? And you can sit down and think about, oh, it's very far from me. No, start with yourself. How many people in your, uh, in your family and your uh, among your relatives in the neighborhood, how many people can <coughs> say today, looking at you, living near to you, how many people could say today that you are helping them to be better? Just a little bit. Your friend, your brother, your sister, even your parents, even your 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 peer in schools or outside. Well, how many today, looking at your life, would say you help me to be better? If you don't help anyone to be better, and you, you don't help yourself to be better, I'm sorry to tell you you are useless. And the worst that you can be before Allah is to be useless among people. This is the worst. If you are before Allah useless or perceived as useless among people it means that you have not understand the very essence of Islam which is to contribute to the and to protect the values. So I have to finish. So we are going to pray the Bible inshallah and as I understood it will be something
some questions after yes. the inshallah. So, uh, try to concentrate on your brain that's here. I had a question. I had a question. How many people in your life can say you help me to be better? And there is none. Wake up. Us quite a bit these days is that why can't we wish the people here uh, happy holidays or Merry Christmas? We're living in this society and it's their, their uh, celebration. When we have our Eid, they come forth and they wish us a happy Eid. So, I mean, this, this ties in with a little bit of your acceptance uh, this thing here.
it's not more than this. And this is the way uh, we deal with our uh, uh, fellow citizens in this country. If we want to be faithful to our principles and respecting their uh, culture, not their culture, because at the end of the day it's also part of our culture, but their festivals, the way they are uh, uh, living with. Uh, and it's always good also in the way we deal with this that when we have our own festivals, we still are open. We should not, for example, either to be or either after, we should not have it among ourselves. It's always good during this day to do something for the people the surrounding you know, the, 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 just to show that, yes, this is our, uh, I, that we are Canadian and Muslims at the same time, so we show that we are connected to the people. That's, that's also very important. Don't have the narrow understanding of your own festival and don't deny the fact that others have the right to their festival. Um, okay, so we have quite a lot of questions and we may not be able to take all of them. So let's get, uh, is there any, any question from the sister? Yes, so we'll take the sister first. Sorry. I will try to answer some short answers. Okay. 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 My question is, for the students who are going to be Thank you. 
in terms of uh, the role of our institutions like Masajid, uh, in terms of the solidarity work, so uh, a bunch of uh, friends and I started an initiative called Civic Muslims, inspired by a lot of your work to just get more of us civically engaged. Um, and we do things like tree plantings, cleanups, blood drives, things like that. We've had a lot of fun in the six months since we started. So the question is, in terms of grassroots initiatives like these, role do you see for mosques in supporting them? Because I've heard two opinions. One is we shouldn't, um, you know, in any solidarity work, sometimes there's negative reactions to solidarity work, right? Um, and some people have said, keep the mosques away because we want those spaces to be protected as prayer spaces. And if you try to get mosques to sign up for campaigns like the Muslims for White Ribbon campaign, you know, some mosques might, you know, get in the spotlight in the wrong way. So what my question is, What's your view of our masajid and our mosques and our institutions in the West? Should we leave them protected for as prayer spaces or do we really try to encourage them to do the solidarity work with us, um, the grassroots solidarity? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they set aside calls for your question already. And I agree with you on slide also. I think that what we need to understand now, we need to get, uh, you need to, if you want to repeat the question, is the question is about should we have mosques only uh, focusing on what the mosque is, what people are praying and to protect this space, or do we have to promote uh, solidarity work and solidarity movement uh, for the mosque? And my position on this is uh, too often our brothers and sisters and maybe the brothers who thought about Building, uh, building a mask or having a mask is it, for us to create and to show that we are peaceful and, and, and that we are protecting the mask from any uh, social interference or political interference. And I think that this attitude is an attitude coming from us being on the defense. We are a bit scared of the society. We are a bit scared of what the people can think about. But in fact, by being scared, and by trying to protect ourselves, we are nurturing a sense in the society that within the mass, what is happening is not clear. So, the less visible you are, the more questionable you are. So you are, in fact, nurturing what you are trying to reform by being isolated. It's what I call, you know, the way you yourself sometimes to create the problem. And you don't, you're not aware of that. And this is, uh, uh, you know, the, the example that I'm always thinking to talk about this is the action that we had at the borders when you have, you know, you are trying to, you are, you are coming to the border and you are going to talk to an officer or a, a, a civil servant at the borders. And you think that was, it happened to me, by the way, I was driving, driving at the borders between the uh, 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 France and, and Italy once, and I said to myself, I'm sure that with the face I had, he's going to arrest me, to stop. And I was driving, and the, the, the cars were going and going, and all of a sudden I was approaching the borders, and the guy who was, and the civil servant was there. And then we, when he looked at me, the fact that I knew that he was going to stop me. I started to be tense. And he saw this when he stopped me. I said, I knew it. <laughs> and in fact, of course, I myself, with my attitude, thinking that he was going to stop me, I put this in my face and he stopped me. And if I could have been at this place, I would have stopped myself because there was something wrong in my face. And in fact, I thought that he was going to think. And because I thought that he was going to think, he thought what I was thinking. He was going to think. <laughs> Get that? This is exactly the way we are with our institution. We think that we are going to think that this is what we are doing, so we stop doing it, and because we are not visible, we say, oh, we are not visible, they are not the because there are something happening behind the wall. So the best way to do is to be assertive. And how do we have to be assertive? By being visible in a very constructive way. And the best is a mosque, like for example in Islamic school. Any Islamic institution should be ethically, socially visible in solidarity terms or in education 
and you have to be connected to the surrounding. The problem is that uh, when you build the, the, the mosque in, uh, in Medina, around the mosque were two people, and the sofa went around the mosque. And he was pushing his own daughter. You have to do the social work. A mosque is a place where you pray, but there is, at the center, at the middle of the city, is, there is a place where you show solidarity. So this mentality that we have to be a peaceful place where nothing is happening is in fact the best way for people to think that where nothing is happening, surely there is something happening behind the doors. So I'm finishing. But it's a very important question. Because this is what we have to do. We have the various institutions that are constructed and positively visible, not only by you know the greatness of the building. But the efficiency of that unit. So, solidarity work, promoting vanity into the society, a mosque in the West is connected to the surrounding society. With the school, for example, let the students from the surrounding schools come to the mosque. Come, we have nothing to hide. Let everything is open. The government, even, we are giving training about Islam to students. Solidarity work, anything that, or for example, we talk about mindset. Things happen in the past that we are against domestic violence. Let things happen about the, 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 the surrounding social problems that we have. So it's not to make the mosque uh, a political space, but a civic space where we talk about responsibility. And Muslims are always talking first about their responsibility, not about their, 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 their rights within the society. And there is nothing wrong with this. I can tell you something, we have lots of experiences in the West where mosques doing this job. For example, even in London, where we have the East London mosque, dealing with the mayor to deal against drugs. And they are now an ally, and they are working with the, the mayor at the local level to just do the work. And it's, it's perceived as it's necessary because they are efficient, they are at the grassroots level, they are connected to the institutions, they are connected with the citizens. And Muslims are perceived as efficient people. Uh, in the United when he decided in Brooklyn, no drugs in the region, and he did the job. This is what the mosque is. A mosque is a place where you come in the mosque for Allah and you get out of the mosque for them. Show solidarity. And if you come to the mosque for you and you get out of the mosque for you, in fact, you are confusing this that with my personal business with Allah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see this as an efficient, uh, positive presence of Muslims in, in the West of Allah. Thank you very much.